Jose Luis J.J. Falcone was born on August 15, 2005 in Plainview, Texas. J.J. was involved in many activities, including cross country, being a 4-H member, and more. But he loved, really loved playing Little League and high school baseball. During his junior year of high school, J.J. was diagnosed with a bone cancer called osteosarcoma. Even after his diagnosis, he continued to support his team by attending as many games as possible. But JJ had a wish to be a Savannah Banana. So this year, on March 13th, right here at Grayson Stadium, it happened. JJ had his own locker, uniform, and more. JJ was a Savannah Banana. That night, he threw out the first pitch that counts, a perfect strike right down the middle. JJ and his dad would spend the next few days with us in Savannah and even joined us on another June tour stop in Birmingham, Alabama. Even with all he was going through, JJ's energy and positive attitude were amazing and inspiring. Last Sunday, August 27th, after a bravely fought battle, surrounded by the love of his family, J.J. Falcone passed away. He was just 18 years old. When we heard the news from his mom, Kathy, these are some of the things that were said by many of us who had the chance to meet and spend time with J.J. He was a great, respectful young man with a heart of gold who impacted every single person that he met. While JJ's wish was to be a Savannah Banana, it's we who are grateful and honored to have had JJ as the strongest teammate and friend we could have ever asked for. Our thoughts and prayers go out to JJ's mom, Kathy, dad, Jose, and the rest of his family. Tonight, we'll have another first pitch that counts. And while JJ isn't here to throw it, we have the memory of the last time he was on this field. Now fans, it's time to show JJ just how much he means to all of us here in Banana Land. <laughs> Grayson Stadium, let me hear you for JJ Falcone. All right, fans, we need your energy here. We're getting ready to start this game, and in order to do it, I'm gonna need you to say it with me after I count down from three. We're gonna all yell, start the clock. So here we go. In three, two, one. Start the clock. Showtime! Leading off to the party animals. Showtime indeed, Mr. Young Professor. We play our 82nd banana, banana ball game of the year in honor of J.J. Falcone. The most powerful, strong, and nice young men that we have all had the pleasure of getting to meet. Came on our broadcast, blessed us with his insight, shared his horrific story, and inspired us all through the many games that he shared with us this summer. A 2-1 two, two count on Reese Hampton. It's always so wonderful to be around him. And I remember even before moving up into the booth this season, getting to spend some time with him just down on the sidelines and in the dugout. Just amazing stuff. Couldn't agree more. And the strike to Reese Hampton is because of JJ as he destroys this one. Deep out to left, Michael Deeb has a whole long way to go. 
Playing in on sprint defense. He's not going to be able to pull that in. And Reese has his 26th double on the season to lead the tour. And that was Reese being able to benefit from the possible sprint defense there from the Bananas. You saw DR Meadows, Danny Hosley, and Michael Deeb all shading in on that 3-1 offering from Ryan Kellogg. And Hampton hit that one very high in the air. It stayed up there long enough for Michael Deep to possibly come up with that catch, but had a difficult time tracking it in this light as well. Fortunately for Reese, it falls in, and the guys celebrate early on that double. And another look at the former White Sox minor leaguer trying to ascertain what was a moonshot all the way out to the warning track. 96 miles an hour off the bat, traveled 317 feet according to Trackman. And with the Detroit Tigers, 12th round draft pick in 2018 out on second, the Texas Rangers first round draft pick from 2010 is at the dish and he is quickly behind, no balls at two strikes. And that only moves that first inning batting average up higher for Reese Hampton. It puts the party animals in great position once again to strike for a run in a possible point here early in the top of the first. Big goal the left fielder. Will the spoil the first 0-2 offering he got from Kellogg? Here comes another. That one lifted out to left. Some more work for Michael Deeb. Hampton is preparing like he's going to tag. He actually will. The throw from Deeb on the money. Hampton's a dead duck. Tried to grab an extra bag and pays the price. 7-5 double play. What a terrific throw from Michael Deeb in left field. Just when you thought Reese Hampton wouldn't try to go to third base there. It's Deeb coming up with a heck of a throw and nailing Reese Hampton, probably the fastest man on this party animal squad. It is a big fly ball double play for the pride of Whitby, Canada. And he faces the man out of Fleming Island, Florida. Tanner Thomas. The one RBIs on the season, two behind Skoll who hits in front of him and Bloomer who hits behind him for the season lead. And Tanner quickly behind, no balls at two strikes. That one all the way to the backstop. Fortuitous bounce for Bill Leroy. Mr. Tinder Thomas, who has stolen first three times on the season, will not try there. And you saw him wincing at first, not stealing first base on that play. But once he saw the ricochet back to Bill, I think he felt OK about his decision. And it's a strikeout for Kellogg. Tight slider. And Thomas pretends like he would break the bat over his knee, but thinks better of it. And after the leadoff double, the double play and the strikeout makes it a three men up, three down inning for the six foot six southpaw. And that's what you usually see from Ryan Kellogg, even as a starter, a guy working very quickly as he gets through this inning in two minutes and 40 seconds for the Bananas. Another look at the K for Kellogg. And we have ourselves a brand new promotion. It is the Toddler Hurdle Race. This will be fascinating to see how it unfolds. It Nobody better to join us in the booth for it than the exterminator, Sean Fluke. How you living tonight, my oh, man? Oh, we're living good. We're living good. Okay, Flukey, let's see what's going on. All right, we actually have a toddler who can run here. Can he hurdle? Oh. Yes! <laughs> That's pretty fascinating. All right, it's a quick race, but an exciting one while it lasted. That means we get a chance to look at how your party animals align defensively. We've already seen all three outfielders at the dish. That is Skull, Hampton, and Thomas. In the infield, third to first, you get Bryson Bloomer, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Sam Clay Camp, Joe Lytle behind the dish, and Brett Helton on the bump, who we will now zoom in on because the former Pittsburgh Pirates minor leaguer is looking to make it four straight complete games for the party animals. He was the first one to start the chain. Yeah, and Brett Helton picked up the win in that complete game, throwing eight credited innings with seven hits allowed, two runs, but none of them were earned. And here's the thing. You saw zero sprints from Brett Helton in that contest and three strikeouts. He allowed the Bananas to put the ball in play, especially on full counts. Just made sure to get pitches over the heart of the plate. And for Helton that night, an average minutes per inning mark of three minutes and 11 seconds. What a wow. superb mark from a starter. Unbelievable right there. D.R. Meadows is the only man truly due up here in the first because if he leaves Grayson Stadium, that will end the frame. Clearly not going to happen. 
He flies out to Tanner Thomas on the first pitch. There we go, one and pitch, one out, there we go. Now Dan Oberst will be in the exact same situation. The only man on the Nanners with a higher batting average and on base percentage than the doctor. And slash line leading the team, hitting 364, reaching base at a 432 clip. And Two pitches. a 544 slugging percentage. And he is retired go. on the second pitch of the ball game. Here comes the check of the watch, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, we've got a very quick inning going for Brett Helton. We are just over 30 seconds so far. So on, we kid. will see what happens as Deep comes up to the plate. If he'll be swinging at the first pitch here. Deep still, Come on, Deep. Deep still strapping up his batting gloves. Oh, yeah, there goes a good 20 seconds. Where's Viro at when we need him? <laughs> well, Viro, unfortunately, flying back from J.J. Falcone's Ooh, funeral. Good take. So that is why he is not in attendance tonight. He's joined by Jared Donaldson, Noah Bridges, and Brandon Sherman. As they venture back to Banana Land before these two teams head out to Milwaukee for the weekend. And now Deep ahead 2-0. Guy that Brett Helton has admitted has given him a lot of trouble. And that continues here. That ball tattooed, but Tanner Thomas <laughs> able to run it down, and it is still an awfully quick inning for the former Pirates minor leaguer. Unbelievable for Brett Helton. That ties the fifth fastest banana ball inning of all time. One minute and 18 seconds for Helton. Let's go, that a boy. He ties Drew Gillespie, and now has four, check that, three, of the seven fastest innings of all time. That being Brett Helton. Another look at Thomas running it down. And now we get Maceo and the boys breaking out a player dance. So Sean Fluke, we had to have you up here because obviously you were the third straight party animal to author a complete game. Can you walk us through the experience? Oh, it was unbelievable. It did take a uh quite some time with what 122 pitches out there something like that that's exactly right yeah, you're spot I, I on heard, man it felt about 82 pitches so <laughs> I, I was a little surprised when i heard that number but i think we had four or five ball force prints which is way too many if you ask me <laughs> but i had a couple strikeouts more than usual so i mean it worked out hand in hand so what we continue to ask these guys who come up after these complete games, did it take any convincing for you with Mike Bavasis to stay in that ball game? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, I don't even think the bullpen blinked an eye over there. I mean, no one was down there. And I kind of have a thing is this, once we go six innings, we do the 6-2-2. If I give up a run, I'll gladly come out of the game. But if I'm cruising, they got to score on me to take me out. So, I mean, if they want me off the mound, they're going to have to do some uh, scoring for sure. Now, can you explain the inspiration behind the pigtails? Oh, man, the pigtails. I don't even know where it came from, honestly. We started doing a couple braids, like four or five to start, and then the boys started chirping the old Wendy's comment, so we just had to uh, full send on the Wendy's here. You might see me out there with a uh, little four for four action on the mound next game. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I like the bit. Another incredible dance by Maceo Harrison and the fellas, DJ the Invader, Malachi Mitchell, Vinny DeRubius, and Alex Ziegler his cohorts in that boogie. And it's gonna be four, five, six for go. your animals, Bryson Bloomer, Joe Lytle, and Jason Swan do to swing it. I don't wanna curse it, but we are undefeated in these uh, black top pink pants and the braids. They're uh, undefeated. As the boys could call over there at first base, we have a little uh, code word for the Bill Roy behind the back page. So you guys, you guys feel like there's a little bit of banana ball superstitions uh, going on right the, now? The boys are grooving right now. We all feel good. The uh, pregame vibes in the locker room are up, and uh, we're just trying to make this uh, comeback here and try to get the win here for this tour. How many more watermelons have you guys eviscerated? Oh, yeah, there was one today for sure. Yeah, We played a little hot potato with a 15-pound watermelon, and... I believe our bat boy was the one that ended up dropping it. Poor, <laughs> poor Blake. <laughs> Come on, Bloom, here we go. Cutting a miss on what looked like a cutter there from Kellogg. He also throws two seam, four seam fastballs, change up slider and curveball. I added that pitch to my repertoire the other night and the boys did not know what to do with it. Uh, instead of that front door loopy slider that I was in love with, I went hard cutter slider and they struggled. It's like uh, another Cutter, a slider variation there, and Kellogg has a second strikeout in as many batters faced. So, Fluke, when you think back on that complete game performance, what do you think was the key aspect that helped you succeed out there on the mound that night? Honestly, it had to be the new pitch. The boys were asking Baba every inning, what is that that he's throwing? And it was cutting, dropping, it was doing all types of things, and I probably threw it about 60% of the time. I mean, it was working good for sure. 80, 80 innings in, we had to add a new pitch, you know, keep the boys on their toes. 
That's a wise decision. <laughs> Joe Lytle or Donut hitter tonight, so if he strikes out, the 221st straight sold out crowd here at Grayson Stadium will all be gifted free donuts thanks to Duncan. And he will not strike out, but he will pop it to Ryan oh, Cox, oh, who goes behind his back 360 for an incredible 132nd trick play of his tour. That is a stupendous catch from Ryan Cox there by the second base back, being able to navigate a little looper off the bat of Joe Lytle. You saw him try a behind the back play against the MLB PAA and not be able to come up with the snag. Here he has figured it out. That is a great play from Coxie. Just took care of the party animals catcher who was two for three with a homer, a triple, and a three base sprint on Friday night. <laughs> now Jason Swan with the 1 1 count. The animals DH. Makes it a ball and two strikes. Swan's been swinging it well the past two games. Yeah, Swan is actually coming off his best month of the tour for the party animals. And right now, riding a five-game hit streak with six runs batted yeah. in on that span. Spot on, Blue Game. You know, that worked exactly how I wanted it to. I had a feeling you were going to hype him up with some stats for the last month. So, two to Swan there. And now for the one-two, it looks like Ryan Kellogg is going to try another hockey pitch. <laughs> hockey pitch, round two. Electric boogaloo, and it's inside. 2-2 count. And Kellogg still wants it. Shows off the skill, balancing the ball on his stick. And he's gonna try and flick this thing into the zone. It's outside and the count runs full. What's he do on the payoff here? Is he that committed to the bit? He's doing it again, here we go. You bet your bottom dollar. 3-2 and it's behind Jason Swan's head, so <laughs> Kellogg Gives up a very rare sprint. Obviously, three of the four balls being fired with a hockey stick. The main reason for that one, and Swanee aboard with two down. And you saw Swan almost just baffled by Ryan Kellogg continuing to stick with the hockey pitch there. That when ball four was fired, sprint kind of Swan kind of hesitated in the box there. And that's why the banana sprint defense, ready as ever, were able to hold Swan to just one base there on the sprint. You never know what the old Vincent Chapman bat there. Sometimes it takes five balls to get a walk to first base. <laughs> 2-0 count on Sam Claycamp, your first baseman and assistant coach in his third world tour, second with the party animals. Comes in hitting 268. Swanee always a danger to run. 14 for 15 in the stolen base attempts. Good, Claycamp. Three straight bad ones to Slam and Sammy. Green light here. There goes Swan. All four. Oh. Pitches a strike, and Jason is running all oh, the way around. Man. He thought it was a sprint. He's going to successfully steal second, tries to deep Jackson Olsen, but the great eight Jeez. is able to tag him with the bare hand. And an unfortunate miscommunication for the party animals as they run themselves out of the inning. Yeah, you never really saw Jason Swan looking at the third base coach there on that play. Very fortunate for Bill and the Bananas. A really good heads up play by the left side of that infield. Two party animals have run into outs now so far early in the evening. Reese Hampton tagging to try and take third, and Jason Swan successfully stealing second and then running straight on through it. He is Josh Tulevsky. He is Sean Fluke, the exterminator, a.k.a. the self-proclaimed strikeout king. <laughs> and Flukey, you guys are three games in to a winning streak here. You need to win the next six, which includes tonight. Obviously, the vibes have to be pretty good in the locker room. Yep, yep. What's going on in there? Oh, I mean, the boys are feeling it. We're clicking. I mean, three complete games in a row. It's unbelievable from the pitchers what we've been doing. I and mean, we're grooving. Why take somebody out when, what, what was the three three uh, complete games? What, five hits, six hits, seven hits? I mean, it's hard to take somebody out when they're doing stuff like that. Well, now you have Brett Helton on the mound, who is the author of the first of those three. Is there anything that you take from Brett Helton and a guy who fills up the zone and mixes his pitches very well. Yeah, I mean, it's just a confidence thing. I mean, he before the game even starts, he's already calling it. Keep your uh, slides on, boys. I'm going all nine innings. So just have the confidence that you're going into the game and you're wanting to pitch nine innings, and then next thing you know, you're doing the 62, the seventh, eighth inning, and now it's time to close the game out. So he uh, definitely fills the zone well, and that's like one thing I had was a lot of walks. But I mean, usually I've been pretty good the past few starts. So. 
Sean, you guys have continued to dominate here in Grayson Stadium. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Bananas home park, you guys have come away as victors more times than not. What do you credit to the success of being able to play in this ballpark? Oh, I mean, the fans not catching many foul balls definitely helps us out a little bit. But uh, I don't know. It's just nothing better than winning in the home of Savannah against the Savannah Banana. So they might have to find a new home here to play in. Good note about the foul balls. There have only been two foul balls caught here in historic Grayson Stadium on the tour. Yep. This is the 28th complete game. We've played parts of 30 games here. And were both those foul balls caught against the party animals? You know that one? That's a great question. One was caught against Tanner Thomas. I no, one has been caught uh, for Ryan Cox. Correct. Oh, yep, That's exactly what I was going to say. Well, Helton into his second inning of work. Got a couple fly balls and a grounder in the first. Now a 1-2 count on Eric Jones Jr., the first of Jackson Olsen and Dakota McFadden. Technically, in baseball, would be different. Good change up, that a boy. And in banana ball, you never know when an inning can end as Helton strikes out EJ right there. Oh. And Brent Helton has continued to own Eric Jones Jr., especially as of late. EJ came into the month of August batting above 300 against Helton. Now enter tonight batting 256. He is 0 for his last 11 against Brett out there at the plate. Yeah. Helton has figured something out. Now a 1-0 count on Jackson Olsen, the third baseman. Ooh. It always seems like you have an insane amount of fun when pitching to Jackson Olsen. Oh yeah, it's a blast for sure. I always wait for everyone's walk-ups, as you guys know. I mean, just gotta get the boys laughing, relax in there, and then Sit him down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite bat bananas batter to face, Luke? Oh, man. I would probably say Olsen or D-Mac, because me and D-Mac always battle. I mean, if you look at the numbers on us, too, it's got to be a 2-2 two or full count every single time I go against that guy. Oh, that ball's this one ball. lifted deep down the left field line. Jake Skoll hustling after it, and we'll catch it for out number two. Got a boy. Five up, five down for the Nanners. And now Helton sets his sights on the aforementioned Dakota McFadden. Yep, here he is. You got the boys smacking their butts in the dugout, so it gets you a little fired up instead of doing the old chest bump that he does in there. <laughs> <laughs> you party animals you know to have some fun as oh, D-Mac yeah. behind 0-1. Nanners extra hitter as you get a look at Lealios. Smacking the old derriere to the white stripes. And this one popped right side. Another quick inning for Brett Helton. As Tanner Thomas goes oh, behind his back. Boy. Nails the trick play for his 10th on the tour. And that's the signature play for Tanner Thomas out there in the outfield. Made that one look real smooth as he comes up with the catch and bails Brett Helton out of the inning. Two minutes and 20 seconds. We are cruising here in Banana Land. Sean Fluke, thank you so much for joining yes, us. Yes, sir. It was a pleasure. I'll be uh, up here next time I pitch for another showman of the night. <laughs> Let's do it. There goes Fluke as you get another look at the Tanner Thomas trick play. And with Isaac Powell and company handing out yellow roses to the good folks here in Historic Race at Stadium, it is fan mail o'clock. Make sure to not throw any uh, addresses around. Okay. Maybe there was something else in here, but this is the only thing I have found. And it's very good. I love it. I also love the Savannah Bananas. Dude, I, I just love getting the fan art. I love seeing the creativity as well. The paper's kind of glued on here. That's awesome. And oh, look at that. It eluded you, Biko. But now you have found the hidden treasure. Dear Savannah Bananas, my name is Natalie Eaves, and I live in North Carolina. I have been through over 40 surgeries in my life and have a pacemaker, spinal fusion. I have congenital heart defects, and I'm intellectually disabled. I have a golden retriever named Comet. I'm a Special Olympics North Carolina athlete, and the sport I play is bowling. That is absolutely awesome, Natalie. Uh, I'm a big fan of the, of the Savannah Bananas. Me and my family saw you guys in Durham, North Carolina on July 15th. My favorite player is Dalton Malden. Great to see him at second tonight. You guys are funny to watch. I watch all the games. That warms the heart. Uh, there's another envelope in the package. The envelope is for Dalton Malden. Can you please get it to him for me? 
I hope you guys like my drawings. Tell the team I said, hey, please hang the fan art in the locker room. My wish is to meet everyone and do church clap with everyone on the team and spend the day with you guys at Bananas Stadium. I want to challenge the Savannah Bananas into a bowling match. Your biggest fan, Natalie Eads. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for the incredible letter and the awesome art there. I'm a really big fan of that as Slam and Sammy on the first pitch here in the top of the third pops out to a cartwheeling Michael Deeb. Look, we've seen some good bowlers between the Bananas and the Party Animals, Jared Donaldson and our guest Sean Fluke to name a couple, but I think Natalie's probably got them beat, to tell you the truth. Couldn't agree more, and obviously Sean Fluke is great at bowling. He's the kind of guy who's incredible at all those kind of more obscure games. Played him in ping pong twice in Des Moines, Iowa, and he waxed the floor with me. I consider myself a rather skilled ping pong player, but nothing compared to the exterminator on the table. Now it'll be Mike Vivasis as he's behind. New balls and a strike, and now and Kellogg do it. A little bit of a like window washing esque move. Now a whole lot of kicks between him, Malden, Cox, and Meadows. And the 0-1 is fouled straight back. Make it 0-2. Delightful 3-2-2 there. Ryan Kellogg continues to get better at the 3-2-2s. He continues to tell us that he is trying his very hardest out there to improve on his moves. I mean, you see a starting pitcher throwing a hockey pitch and nailing 3-2-2s, working quickly. You love to see it. And it's going to get a 9.2 score from Zach Brongelo. That is high praise from our director of entertainment. Basis with a 2-2 count on him. He's in his third world tour, all three of them with the boys in black and pink. Able to fight off the backdoor cutter. Count still two and two. Sitting just below the Mendoza line, but a tough man to strike out. Four sprints compared to just eight strikeouts on the tour. That heater misses inside, and the count runs full. And you've got to consider for Mike Basis as well, a lot of spot starts for him, usually when it's catching for Sean Fluke. And spot starts can be very difficult as a hitter. You're just not seeing pitches consistently every day. Mike Bavasis just seven hits since the month of June, but a big fly in Rancho Cucamonga, his biggest hit of the tour to date. After a 3-2 changeup, Kellogg comes back inside with the fastball and misses. So Bavasis with a well-deserved sprint, he will pump the brakes at first, not challenging the Bananas defense who gets it around all seven fielders behind. Kellogg and Leroy awful quickly, and the party animals have their third base runner of the night. The first two ran into outs. And you're actually going to see the party animals kind of take advantage of the pinch runner situation as they've inserted Colin Ledbetter into the game to run for Mike Vavasis, who will now coach it first. The automatic runner for the second straight game for the party animals, Ledbetter. As Dustin Baber pops it to Eric Jones Jr. for out number two. And now Chase Acuff will try his luck. with Vava at first and two away. Ledbetter was pegged to be one of the better pitchers on the Party Animals staff coming into the season. And unfortunately, injuries have kept him to only two innings pitch, and they were both in Peoria, Arizona in his lone appearance on the tour. But boy, oh boy, the talent is incredible. He was the best pitcher in the United Shore Professional Baseball League last summer, which is high a really high honor to achieve. And look, even in those two innings for the party animals, a three minute and 53 second average minutes per inning mark, as this one is skied to Dalton Malton, and he goes under the legs to make a trick play and get out of the inning for the Bananas. Beautiful trick from the songbird of our generation for his 40th on the tour in just 42 attempts. Ryan Kellogg is cruising. Three party animals have reached, but he has erased two of them on the pads and stranded one more. All smiles for the Canadian as we pop up into the broadcast booth for some magic with Jake Schwartz. And we should unmute his mic. 
Yes, that's right, Pico. Josh, I'm just going to have you touch the back of any one of these cards here. Just touch the back of one. This one right here, all right, I'm going to have you take a look at it. I'm going to show it to our folks at home. In fact, it's even okay if I see it. It's the uh, 10 of hearts here because we are going to make sure this 10 of hearts is totally 100% unique. Pico, hold on to those three quarters of a card. Uh, Josh, the corner, that one is for you. Hold on to that. And Pico, I'm actually going to have you put that inside of our envelope here. Go ahead, put it right in there. Perfect, because, you know, I come uh, onto the broadcast, I do a banana -fied version of a magic trick every time, but you know what? I just wanted to have a classic, you know? Just kick back, have a nice classic of magic, and uh, a nice little card vanish here. So let's take a look inside the envelope. That card is totally gone, 100% gone from inside that envelope. I'm going to rip it here just so you guys at home can get a really nice good shot of that empty envelope. And you know, it's fun. It's like a, uh, you know, just a nice, a nice throwback. You know, just, you know, ni nice throwback of a magic trick. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I was thinking. To oh, oh, we have a, we have a crashing of the broadcast. That's, oh, it's Jackson. It's Jackson, you have something? Oh, that's that's weird, Jackson. Show that show that to the camera. That's a. I don't even know why I'm here right now, but I have this. I that's a. That's the uh, that's the card that you picked. Line that up, Josh. Fiber for fiber. Is that your exact ten what? of yeah, cards? Yeah, that's my card. Let's show that to our what? folks at home. That's a surprise crashing of the broadcast. Shout out to Jackson. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jake oh. Schwartz. I once again. Thanks, Jackson. Wow, Jackson. Have fun on the field, man. Thanks, See ya. Jackson. There he goes. Jake Schwartz, you are a sorcerer. And a couple hundred years ago, you would not be allowed to live with us who do not have the magical touch. That was troubling. I mean, he set us up for the big reveal there, but I was truly sitting around like, yeah, okay. Kind of think I might have figured this one out. And then all of a sudden, I'm baffled once again as Leroy hits a skipper to Dustin Baber, who goes between the legs for his 82nd trick play of the season. One away here in the third. And you know Dustin Baber is trying very hard to get to that triple digit mark for the party annals, become the second player in World Tour history to 100 trick plays. He's going to need to get on a pretty furious pace, but when Brett Helton is on the mound, he knows he's going to get his fair share of ball ground balls at second base. He gets one there, and that's his first trick play of the night. I'd expect one or two more tonight from Baber. Now it'll be Ryan Cox, the Nanner shortstop. And he pops it to shallow left. Skull coming in, he will make the call. And it goes behind his back, it comes up empty. Coxie trying for second, he will now reverse course and return to first. That is a very tough way for a young perfect game to be broken up. And that's what you saw in Brett Helton's last start, that complete game. He allowed two runs, but neither of them were earned because of two trick plays missed. We will see, though, if he can now keep the bananas off the base pass for the rest of this inning and hold serve without a point being scored through these first three innings. Malachi Mitchell pinch runs for Coxie over at first. Danny Hosley, the tour leader in walk-offs with 27. Will stroke that one through the left side of the infield. And two pitches after the perfect game is spoiled. The no-hitter evaporates into thin air as well. The inning-winning run up to second base. It was only the third inning, but sue me for getting a little excited after the first seven guys were retired by Brett Helton. Look, you didn't do the broadcaster's jinx. You didn't reference it at all, so that's a pro move from you. I'm, I'm going to give you some credit there. So I only spoke on it after the matter. As a front door bender, it's strike one here on Dalton Malden. In his second world tour, the Nainer's second baseman. Get one and one. Look out for fastball cutter changeup curveball from Helton on the bump. Blown away by the heater. Really nice two seam movement on what Trackman had as an 89 mile an hour fastball. And Malden likes hitting against Brett Helton because he knows he's going to see pitches over the heart of the plate. 
Most of the time for Malton, it's just a matter of being able to get the bat on the ball. And unfortunately, he'll strike out here. Joe Lytle tries for a back pick over at first base, but it is Hosley back at the back in safely. Yeah, no contact with the ball there. Ellen followed up the fastball with a 79 mile an hour changeup, according to Trackman. That was a really well executed pitch. And to the top of the order we go. Inning winning run still in scoring position. And it looks like we have a specialty walk up. DR Meadows is joined by Bill Leroy and a little lip sync action going on. Disney era we fell into up north has found its way back down south here into Savannah. Josh, as a man who has seen just about zero Disney movies in my life, do you know what this is from? Uh, it is from the 1989 classic, The Little Mermaid. Sounded like it, felt like it, and there is DR's girlfriend for a kiss at the plate. See if it inspires some third inning heroics for Mr. Meadows, who flew out to right on the first pitch he saw tonight. That one at the bottom of the zone, not called a strike. Pitcher's pitch, Elton doesn't get the call, but he does theirs. He sends a front door cutter right down the middle. And DR Meadows is actually another reason that Brett Helton has found so much success, especially in the month of August. He's limited Eric Jones, as we mentioned earlier, but it was DR just two for 10 against Brett Helton last month. DR, of course, more often than not, is feeding the top of this bananas order. Anytime you can keep him off the base pass as a pitcher, it is really aiding you. Great stop by Joe Lytle. He keeps Malachi Mitchell at second base as he smothers that one. 2-2 two -two count now on what was a 69 mile an hour curveball according to Trackman. So Helton showing off the whole arsenal to the doctor here. Now a 2-2 two -two with two on and two down. Peter is bounced back to Brent. He knocks it down, grabs it and fires to first just in the nick of time. Lightning fast reflexes for the party animal starting pitcher and he strands a pair here in the third. That's a terrific job by Brett Helton just getting glove on ball. Excellent reaction time and you saw him not try to rush himself as he was able to fire a perfect strike to Clay Camp and record that out. After getting another look at it, we'll throw it down to Emily Cole to honor our Bananas Foster family of the night. Ago, we learned a lot about the foster care world, including the fact that there are over 400,000 kids in care across the country without a permanent home. So we started a 501c3 dedicated to celebrating those who are already making a difference in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. That nonprofit's name is Bananas Foster. And tonight, we have the honor of celebrating the Holland family. Sarah and Jeremy have been fostering for eight years, and along with their two biological children, they've welcomed 14 children into their home. The goal in foster care is always reunification, but when that can't happen, adoptions happen. Later this month, the Holland family will be permanently welcoming three children into their family who have been a part of their family already for a couple of years. Fans, please stand and help us welcome the Holland family to the field as we recognize what they're doing for families and kids right here in our community.
is an incredibly special moment wherever Banana Land is. And we get to honor the foster families that are superheroes out in the world. And tonight, it's the Holland family. Along with the two biological children, welcoming 14 more in, about to adopt three siblings who have been in their care for years. And of course, the goal, the primary goal of foster care is reunification, but if that's not possible, it is always heartwarming to see these foster families adopting themselves. Really fascinating decision by the Bananas here. Ryan Kellogg goes three innings, gives up one hit in two sprints, but picked up a couple strikeouts and had not allowed a run, and they go to the bullpen here in the top of the fourth to Connor Higgins. Yeah, you hope everything is okay with Ryan Kellogg health-wise coming out so early. Usually a guy you're seeing pitch five or so innings for the Bananas, but they'll turn to Higgins, who all in all is a nice change of pace for the Bananas in terms of a pitching plan. Kellogg sitting low 90s, but Connor Higgins, he can get up to 95, 96 on the radar gun for him. It's all about throwing strikes, and we saw him pitch in the MLB PAA game in the last contest for the Bananas, and both batters he faced, he struck out on just eight pitches. Yeah, that is a fact. So it was a great outing from Higgins to find the zone again. Took down Luis Montanez and Brady Clark in short order. Never an easy task, task to dice up two former major leaguers like that. Chris Hampton at the top of the order, let off the ball game with a towering double deep to left. Michael Deeb now probably playing about 20 to 30 feet deeper than he was on the 3-1 pitch that Hampton got the two-bagger on. And now with the 1-0 count, Vincent Chapman calls time, dusts off the plate, and gives us an incredible show, as he has been known to do. Even the phone leaving his pocket with the gyrations of our home plate umpire. Another incredible dance from Vincent. Hope one of these nights our first base umpire, Chris Walker, could give us a little boogie as well. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a really fun sight to see. And by the way, by my uh, eye test, that was 42 shakes per second for Vincent Chapman there. Uh, all around a really solid mark on his uh, season average. Sounds right to me. 2-0 count on Hampton after the 90 mile an hour heater misses inside. And now three balls and no strikes. He gets attended Arizona State springs of 2016 through 2018. He fills the gap of Brian Kellogg, who was at Arizona State springs of 2013 through 2015. Between the two of them, that is six straight Sun Devil squads. Higgins back in the count. 3-2 coming now to the party animal center fielder. And he's going to work the sprint. Enters have to get it around the field awful quickly. Reese will pump the brakes in reverse course back to first as all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher do an excellent job tossing the ball between themselves. And you saw on the 3-0 offering from Connor Higgins that was called a strike, some aggression from Reese Hampton. Already thinking about getting out of the box and taking off to try and get two bases. You still saw that when ball four was issued here, but the banana sprint defense continues to be incredibly solid as they limit Hampton to just one base. Reese, the tour leader in on base percentage. And at 444 coming into the night, he's now been on base both times. Check swing from Jake Skoll. Looks like it's gonna be foul tipped. As he converses with Vincent Chapman about what happened there, he's behind 0-2. And you know for Reese Hampton, he loves to get on base any way he can, but sitting at 93 hits, including his double tonight, he is just seven hits away from possibly becoming the first player in World Tour history to 100 hits. So really hard for him at times to take those ball fours and earn the sprint as the Bananas try for a possible double play. And Ryan Cox may be trying to say that Reese Hampton had an interference sliding into second base, but it appears that Jake Skull will remain at first base. It'll be a fielder's choice for Skull as he's on. 
Yeah, Coxie didn't have anybody to throw to. Let's give it down to Eric Jones. Tell me the story of your first kiss. Oh, first kiss. Bring me back to high school, movie theaters. Oh, good swing. Do you remember what movie? Mm, Avengers. Nice. Um, had to leave the movie, the kiss was so bad. <laughs> So I gotta catch up on that one soon. Sorry to hear that, Jake. And that's first to first. Hey, the illuminating story about Jake Skull's first kiss is Tanner Tinder Thomas behind one and two. Bring up memories for you, Josh? Not particularly, you know, I, I probably wouldn't do it during the Avengers, but I'm old fashioned. <laughs> Deep into that one in a little bit. This one tapped to short. Cox, 360 to Malden. Throw to first. Never had a chance at two. But it is the second trick play of the night in the 133rd on the season for the Glove Magician. And such a snazzy play from Ryan Cox. I mean, just being able to get that ball 360 and still get it out of the glove accurately to Dalton, Dalton Malden, knowing he's breaking for the bag. That is not an easy play. That is definitely something that you know Ryan Cox and Dalton Malden have practiced a time or two to be able to get down in the actual games. Grayson Bloomer on the first offering he sees from Connor Higgins. Bounces that one through the vacant four hole. Now Thomas up to second, Bloomer on first. And the party animals. With two men aboard for the first time tonight. It's gonna be Joe Lytle, the catcher, the donut hitter who popped out to short. And what was Ryan Cox's first trick play of the evening. There goes Tanner Thomas for third. No throw from Bill Leroy. Tanner now an incredible 21 for 23 in his stolen base attempts. And you saw some strategy from Bill there as Tanner was taking off, faking the throw and seeing if he could get Bryson Bloomer to possibly bite on a double steal or possibly pick him back off at first base. Bloomer wisely, not really moving there. He'll let Tanner get up to third, and they'll keep the bat in the hands of Joe Lytle, who's swinging a real good stick again. Four runs batted in his last game against the Bananas. That one just misses down. The party animals at the corners. Is that one fouled away? And we have a 2-2 count. Full capacity crowd, 281st straight sold out bananas game. They want their free donuts, so they will not get it here. Joe Lytle gets a front door slider, sends it right back where it came from. He in at 73, left his bat at 89 miles an hour, and the party animals strike first. They have a run here in the fourth. And that puts Joe Lytle in double digit runs batted in since the month of August started. And boy, Joe continuing to swing the bat. You saw Higgins try and offer it. An unintentional kind of behind the bat catch there, really in self-defense more than anything, and possibly to block the ball and let an infielder try and nab that one. But it's going to go in favor of the party animals. Now they are in possible position to get that first point on the board, which again has been very crucial in games lately between these two squads. How about Split, a Roman cameraman, and well, it makes sense. He doesn't have great vision in that suit, so he's kind of just looking at the ground for a while. But he's found Dylan Porter. It looks like he's rocking a beautiful mustache. And then the roaming camera kind of loses track of itself once again. Jason Swan will swing with Lytle at first and Bloomer on second. Fastball gets the outside corner. Jason worked himself. The ball four sprint in the second inning. Now he's got a 1-1 count on him. And it was the ball four sprint that began this inning that turned out to be the bugaboo for Connor Higgins. It wasn't the runner who nabbed it. Reese Hampton was taken off the base pads on a fielder's choice. And then Jake Skoll, who eliminated Hampton on the fielder's choice, was taken out in a fielder's choice as well. And Tanner Thomas, who represented that lingering runner, ends up scoring the run. But a trick play from Dalton Malden, his second of the game and 41st of the season, will 
end the inning in which all three outs were fielders' choices. And what stands out about that play from Dalton Malden is ordinarily in a baseball game, it is really difficult to make that play as you're trying to feed it over your body, but being able to go behind the back was probably the best choice that Dalton Malden had to be able to record that out. And because they practice trick plays so much, they are able to get Connor Higgins out of the inning with him only allowing one run. We had 3-6, three, 6-4, six, six, and 4-6 fielders' choices to get all three outs. The latter two were both trick plays from Cox and Malden. And the Bananas will need one run to tie the inning, two runs to win it. They had two men aboard against Brett Helton in the third, but failed to cash in. It's going to be 2-3-4, and four. Dan Oberst, Michael Deeb, and Eric Jones Jr. But before that, we hey baby. And well, Brett Helton and company dance us into the bottom of the fourth. Great time to wish a very happy birthday to Patrick Smith and also a one day early happy birthday to legendary K-Clubber and Bananas Insider before that, one of our favorites, Judy Pounders. Yeah, awesome to celebrate Judy and Patrick. Judy, of course, somebody we've seen here in Banana Land in Savannah in games we used to take to Macon. And how about this? Patrick watching all the way out in Hawaii. That's always fun to celebrate. Come on now. That fires us up. And a big thank you to everybody watching the broadcast tonight here on your Labor Day. We appreciate you spending your Monday evening with myself, Josh, Sean Fluke, and all of us here in the BTV world. We are getting awful close to Brett Helton, having 10 inches of his hair cut off, and our darling Josh Tolevsky having that beautiful manly mustache of his shaved right off by Cowboy Kyle Lewis. I'll admit, I'll be, I'll be honest here, I'm a little scared. <laughs> it's starting to set in the nerves, but it is nothing compared to my arachnophobia, so <laughs> I think I'll be okay in the end. You know what really helps with arachnophobia? You just keep bell peppers, some red bell peppers in particular, around in your kitchen, and it actually scares off spiders. Is it like a scent thing? They don't like the smell of that? We've never actually been able to really figure out the cause of it. Smell is an idea, but sight and feel in general aura from a red bell pepper it's one it's one of those three that makes sense because you know they've got the flashing lights and things that'll keep other bugs away yeah that completely checks out for me correct so if anybody's having spider problems at home a red bell pepper it's going to do the job for you well at least hopefully it does don't come to us if it does not okay two three four for the Nanners here in the bottom of the fourth. They need a run to tie the inning two to win it. And Dan Oberst gonna do a heck of a job kicking off the party. He grounded out to Brett Helton his first time right back at the bump. And lines that one on a 79 mile an hour cutter. 100 miles per hour off the bat into left center for a base hit. And that's what Dan Oberst does best, hitting hard hit line drives. He reaches out over the plate gets the barrel on that ball and just continues to hit Brett Helton especially well. A 368 mark against Helton. And get this, five of Dan's last six games have all been multi-hit affairs. Guy's red hot. It hasn't been a month on the tour where he's hit below 300. He's trying to keep it that way through our final month of the tour here in September. Michael Deeb, who flew out to Thomas and Wright his first time, flies it to Hampton and center this go around. Now Eric Jones Jr. who struck out swinging on a nasty right on right change up from hell in his first time. Try to change his luck here in round two. And that's what you continue to see in these ABs is Brett Helton going to the off speed pitch with two strikes on EJ. But here EJ knowing Brett was trying to go to his kryptonite is able to sit back drive that one into left field and now the Bananas have a rally going as Malachi Mitchell is going to come in at first base and be that go ahead run possibly for the Bananas here on the four. Yeah, you saw Hilton trying to front door that curveball. That was at 72 miles an hour. Dan Obers picked off of second. Hilton winds around and nails one of the Bananas best and smartest base runners and a very rare Base running mistake there for the five-year banana. As you get another look, yeah, he's a dead duck. Tagged out by his 2021 CPL Bananas teammate. And we've got a fan challenge, I believe. Well, unfortunately, the fans are going to be wrong once again. We already got a look at it on the replay, but we will 
Slap the Rito headsets on and chat with Avery Hughes and Vincent Chapman down on the field. Hello, Avery and Vincent. We'll get another look at this one, but we just saw it on the replay here on the broadcast, and Oberst looks out by a mile. And we get to see it again, and the call yep, will stand. call is confirmed, guys. Stan is out. Good work, everybody. Shout out Henry Campbell, our low home cameraman tonight, with the perfect shot for the challenge as Vincent will now go celebrate with his umpiring mate, Chris Walker, who nailed the call. This crew is out of their minds. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. So all of a sudden, there were two on and just one out. Dan Oberst is 42 for 47 in his stolen base attempts. Very dangerous base runner taken off the bags. The only man who has swiped more bases than Dan Oberst is pinch runner Malachi Mitchell, who still resides at first. Jackson Olsen gives this one a heck of a ride out to center, but Reese Hampton over the shoulder. He really is incredible. Puts an end to the inning, and the party animals earn the first point tonight. They're up one zip. And that is what continues to really help the party animals more than anything playing in Grayson Stadium is the offense when they need it. But this outfield continues to cover so much ground, and it's Reese Hampton using his speed and just excellent defensive IQ to be able to come up with that snag deep off the bat of Jackson Olsen. Back down to the field we go. Emily Cole, let's cut Brett Helton's hair. I said, Emily Cole, let's cut Brett Helton's hair. Bananas Foster has been working with tonight's starting pitcher for the party animals, Brett Helton, to raise money for foster families in our community. For every $1,000 that we raised, Brett offered to cut one inch of his hair. Tonight, we are so excited to be cutting 22 inches of Brett's hair, meaning we have raised over $22,000. The hair that we cut tonight will be donated to a child in need from Wigs for Kids. Making the first cut tonight, we'd like to welcome to the field Elena, a Wigs for Kids recipient. Suffers from a hair loss condition called trichotillomania. And she will be making tonight's first cut. Cut that hair! Cut that hair! the field we are going to welcome the Holland family to make our second cut and we are also going to bring out Brett's mom to make another cut we'll be making the rest of the cuts later in the night cut that hair cut that hair keep it going louder Cut that hair! Cut that hair! Keep it going! Cut that hair! We'll update you more later in the night. Thanks, Brett! Well, that is the appetizer that will lead to the tasty main course of Josh Tolevsky's mustache this evening. It's starting to really set in, huh, Josh? You were playing it incredibly cool these last couple days. I'm feeling a little squirmy now. <laughs> I'm also worried, man. Kyle, he, he messes me up. He might. He just might. But you know what? We're going to have to trust in the six-year banana. Or else who are we as a broadcast team? You make a darn good point. Thank you. And 
replacing Connor Higgins on the bump will be a four-year banana, Nolan Daniel. Two Coastal Plain League championships under his belt. In 2021 and 2022, this is his first campaign as a pro. And he's got a 1-1 count on 2018 banana Sam Clay Camp. And outside of one less than ideal performance in Portland, Maine, in which Nolan Daniel gave up six hits and six earned runs for the Bananas. He has been incredibly solid. In fact, six of his 14 hits were allowed in Portland, and six of his eight total earned runs allowed in that Portland game as well. But he's bounced back very well and pitched against the MLBPA and posted a two-minute and 44-second eighth inning his last time out. There's that fantastic slider. Clay can't be able to check his swing on it. 2-2 coming now. Daniel also throws a very heavy sinker and employs a changeup primarily to lefties. He's back with a fastball that's fouled away. And that is a fastball, not where it was intended to go. Trackman had it at 90 miles an hour. It ends up hitting slamming Sammy pretty much square in the back, and now he's going to Put on a little gymnastics routine. One of the worst cartwheels I've seen in my life as he heads down the first baseline. What do you think that gets on a Frangelo scale? 3.04. <laughs> Very exact. Clay Camp hit for the fourth time on the tour. He resides on first base with nobody gone for his partner in crime on the coaching staff, Mike Vivasis, who fouls a heater straight back. Baba worked a one base sprint in the third inning. Ended up being stranded there. Slider steals strike two. Nolan out of Dublin, Georgia, where he's one of the greatest pitchers in West Lawrence High School history. Pitched to Bill Leroy his sophomore year when Bill was a senior. Now they are battery mates for a second, actually third time in Banana Land. They were teammates in 2020 and 19. Here's Eric Jones at first. Now batting number nine, Dustin Baber. We're back again with first at first. Sammy, tell me about the first time you got grounded. The first time I got grounded, I was probably 10 years old, and I stole the crayon box, and I colored my whole, pa uh, whole parent's basement. I colored literally top to bottom as high as I could reach. Good work. That's first to first. Pretty good going 10 years in life before getting grounded. That's not bad at all. Dustin Baber sends this a mile high. Michael Deeb only has to take a few steps back to ascertain the banana ball and get out number two for Nolan Daniel. That's what I'm doing. That'll be Chase Acuff who popped out to second his first time. It was good lumber from Dustin Faber on a 90 mile an hour fastball. It left his bat at 91. There's too much launch angle. He did it at 41.44 degrees straight up into the air. A little less lift and could have left the ballpark. We also saw Michael Deep in pretty perfect positioning, not moving too much to be able to snag that fly ball from Dustin Baber. And now it's Chase Aka out in the, in the box against Nolan Daniels. He tries a pickoff and nearly catches Sam Playcamp. And how about this for Aka? He is the batter tied for the most at bats against Nolan Daniel of any party animal. He's got a 2 0 count here. Make it 3 0. That one just a pinch above the zone. Playcamp had a meaty lead before Nolan checked on him. Sammy four for four in his stolen base attempts. It looked like Acuff was preparing for a home run swing on 3-1. There goes Sammy. 
Bottom of the zone with the pitch, and Clay Camp now perfect five for five in his attempts at swiping bags. And it's just so sneaky what Sam Claycamp can do on the base pass. He chooses his times to steal very wisely, and still it continues to work out for him. Now he's in scoring position, and a bad one could score him. And there it is from Nolan Daniel. Claycamp is getting the wave, and he will come across. The party animals have played it a run in back-to-back -back innings. They lead by a point. They now lead the fifth inning by a run. And that stolen base. Looms oh so large as Clay Camp scores easily from second base. Pretty rare sight there from Nolan Daniel as well. He is 10 and a third innings in the books in his banana ball career. That was only his third sprint allowed. Yeah, Nolan's been very good at pounding the zone, but unfortunately just one of those nights so far where we've seen him a little bit erratic and it all started with of course that hit by pitch to Sam Claycamp. To the top of the order, Reese Hampton turns around to hit lefty and watches that heater barely miss the outside corner. Reese a double his first time, a sprint to lead off the fourth inning, which ended up leading to the first run and then first point of the game for the party animals. So sprints have been the key component in both runs scored for the bad boys of Banana Land. Now as Chase Aka caught between first and second. Jackson Olsen now running him down. Eric Jones gets the ball again, puts his head down. The flip to Ryan Cox, who is able to run down his counterpart at short. That's the third party animal to run into a run. Check that, run into an out so far on the night. But they will still accept the one run lead in the inning and the one point lead in the ball game. As you get another look at the pickle. It's a good deke there from EJ. Rundown defense. It's always been highlighted by one really good fake toss. And Ryan Cox is going to be able to make the tag there on A cuff. And oh, baby, we are up into the broadcast booth. Here's Cowboy Kyle. We're going to spin the wheel of unfortunate tonight. No, 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 Biko. It is the wheel of fortunate. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to be the first to spin it if it's the Wheel of Fortunate. Lunch date with Chad! Nice. Nice. That, really that kind of rules. I'm, I'm instantly jealous. That rocks. Come on! Eat Tim Tams! Come on now! Are you kidding me? Can you hold this so I, I can... Those yes, of course I can, it. Kyle. <laughs> is this the first ever Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, I'm all about Loving this it. business. Big money, big money, big money, big money. Hydrate! hydrate! Lucky for me, I've got some water right all in my right. back pocket. And boy, have I been Does putting it down. Does that mean we all hydrate? Yes, yeah, I think we all okay. should. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Aubrey hydrating off screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is good. Everybody's getting in on the action. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. As is Josh. Okay, uh -huh. Chad, I think, was trying to get Tim Tams. Mm -hmm. but we don't have any Tim Tams anymore, but... We do we've, have cookies from got, Marty Barrington. We've got so many cookies, the grandma. Guys, you know what? It's the wheel of fortune. Oh my goodness. All about generosity. Oh, why do I get the Peace, one? love, and happiness. Mm. Kind of says chocolate chip. Mm, mm, yes, it is. Mm. And they're very good cookies. Mm. Again, thank you to Marty for making these. They're mm. phenomenal. I've already had five. This is down. Would you happen to have quarter. any milk on you? No. Nope. On your person right now? Oh gosh, it pains me to say that. It's okay. Tough. Tough. Sometimes I get you. I gotta say, boys. As we head into the bottom of the fifth here, Bananas down one run in the inning. We need to at least put one to keep the deficit at 1-0 and two runs um, to knot this thing up. This game has been buzzing by. Excellent. Almost like that mustache is going to buzz off your face here soon in a bit, Josh. <laughs> oh, I should have known you would do that, Kyle. You like that? <laughs> I should have known. Yeah, a lot of people are here to see Brett's hair get cut, but I am here to buzz your mustache. That's the only reason I woke up this morning. Oh, I'm sure you woke up with immense joy. Just a big old smile. Brett Helton also has a big smile on the mound. He still has the majority of the hair he's been growing for the past four and a half years. Although three cuts have been made, more will be made in the future. It's going to be six, seven, and eight for your bananas here, Kyle. It's Dakota McFadden, Bill Leroy, and Ryan Cox do to swing it. I like all of them. I was um, up to pinch run for Jackson Olsen to get him tonight. Um, unfortunately, him flying out to end that last inning and, and possibly even up that inning. Um, I did not get to get back on the base pass, but boy, am I itching. Front door curveball. That thing's obliterated out to left. 
But just like Dustin Baber in the top half of the inning, too much launch angle. Seventy-one miles an hour on the curveball. Left D-Max bat at ninety. It feels like balls are getting, you know, launched out to all parts of the park tonight, but not really flying too much, you know. Like they say, you know, not a lot of grass, a whole lot of leather out there in the outfield. And that's kind of what DMAC has experienced for much of the last month or so. 19 flyouts since the start of August for DMAC. That includes tonight. And lately, he is just one for his last 12. So, in a little bit of a slump. And that's why you've seen him move from the four and five spot into the six hole tonight for the Bananas. He's 0 for 2 with two flyouts tonight. One to right and the one you just saw to left. Leroy now the ball and a strike on him. Grounded out into a trick play by Dustin Baber at second his first time. Now Chase Haycuff gets in on the action. Nothing tricky about it, but it is two up, two down here in the bottom of the fifth. It's a good solid play by Chase Acuff there. The way he had to range over to get that ball off the bat of Bill Leroy. Really never had a great time or opportunity to really put that ball between his legs, which I think would have been the ideal decision for Acuff there. But this is a, po a point in the game where the party animals have a run in the inning, are just trying to get three outs and go up two points over the bananas. Now Ryan Cox behind 0-1. He reached on a trick play, missed by Jake Skull. That broke up the seven batter perfect game that Helton started the evening on. Yeah, just it, just touching a little bit more on um, Brett. I think it's so awesome what he's doing um, with his hair and getting a chance to donate it as well as, I think that, you know, at the start of this tour, I didn't know him very well, but I think, you know, as we're wrapping up and, and hitting game 82 here, I don't think that you can find much of a better person, you know, on or off the field. And really cool moment to have all those recipients as well as, you know, his mother getting in on the action and cutting his hair. I think it's it's nothing but fantastic stuff happening here tonight. Peter up and in nearly knocks Coxie out of the batter's box. That one came in at 90 after the changeup before it floated in at 77. That's a big key of Helton's success is the change in velocities as he goes to the cutter there and Dustin Baber between the legs with a bounce to first. His second trick play of the night, 83rd of the tour, and the party animals have won the inning. They celebrate like they just won this whole thing. And Brett Helton continues to work quickly in this ball game. So far, the MPI through the first five innings for Helton, one minute and 18 seconds, two minutes and 20 seconds, four minutes and 10 seconds, two minutes and one second, and now two minutes and 53 seconds. This is what you're getting from the Greek god of MPI. Big reason why we have five innings in the books with still 53 minutes on the clock. Zach Phillips will be on the mound when we return with Cowboy Kyle in the booth. But right now, the banana splits are going to dance us into the sixth. Superb as they always are. And we now enter the last half inning of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our dear friends over at Zappos, that Josh Tolevsky will have a mustache for. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. 
you, you guys, oh gosh! You guys hear something? <laughs> I don't know. I think my headset's messing up. What is that noise? Zach Phillips takes the mound for the bananas in the top of the six. That's the razor, Chad. That's gonna demolish that mustache of yours. And mind you guys, he's, he's coming off a very strong month of August where he averaged a three minute and 15 second MPI as Reese Hampton hits a laser off the bat in the center field, but DR Meadows comes in and is able to make the first out of the sixth for Phillips. Yeah, Hampton rocketed that one at 92 off the bat. He was turning around back to hit righty after he had two strikes on him in his lone at or attempt at that bat against a right-handed pitcher, Nolan Daniel, when Chase Aka was picked off and ran into the final out. Not uh, sure previous. where that one missed. Yeah, that looked pretty good. Just outside at 90 miles an hour for Phillips, and you're seeing the, the classic same pitch. Um, <laughs> you're seeing the classic uh, bullpen game from the Bananas here, really trying to get our ducks in a row going into Milwaukee, especially Saturday having that doubleheader. Um, you know, Kellogg getting a bit of a short start here, coming off of a little bit of a sickness and getting the bullpen guys some work in as we go into three games in two days in Milwaukee. It's good to hear that there's nothing else going on with Kellogg because Josh and I were slightly alarmed when he threw three scoreless innings and then was not back out on the bump for the fourth. No, he's all, all Gucci. It's great to hear. Jake Skoll has not been Gucci thus far tonight, and he still is not Gucci. A fly out, a ground out, and now a strikeout as Phillips drops down to Nabble. Yeah, and you've seen that strikeout percentage for Jake's goal on the season continue to climb. It was at 20.8% coming into the night, beating all party animals. So, been a real tough go of things lately for Jake's goal, who just has not been able to hit the breaking balls more than anything. Looks like Tanner Thomas started the game with his pants down. He's now yanked them up after he has struck out and bounced it to a fielder's choice. He did score the inning-winning run in the fourth as that razor continues to hum. Sometimes you got to change your look, you know? He didn't have a good first half of the game, so he changed his pants, just like I'm going to change Josh's face here in one out. Two strikes. Buzz. Buzz. But I've never anticipated something more than I'm anticipating this in the moment currently. This is quite possibly the biggest moment of your life thus far as we are now a strike away from the shaving of the stash. Would you like to, I was thinking we could come up with something, we could probably do something with this hair. I know it's not quite long enough to <laughs> Guys, get it to love the vlogs. But no, 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 the mustache hair, Josh. This one out to but left could... center, DR Meadows and Michael Deeb converging. It will be the doctor who tracks it down. A one, two, three inning for Zach Phillips. He does it in short order as per usual. And it is time to shave the mustache as Chris Sachi just absolutely destroyed Kyle's headset. Just plowed right through our wires here. I thought he was going under and he went over. <laughs> okay, the time is now. We want to use some shaving cream though, right, Josh? You next, like next, cream? next. We're going. Oh, you do this first. We're going. A, we're going to go. We're going to trim it first with the electric. I don't understand um, how these things razor, work. Razor, and okay. then we're going to get it to a oh, manageable length okay. that we can then get the shaving cream going. Are you ready? Do you have any last words? It's been a good run, guys. It has it's been. been a good run. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, there they go. Oh, and they fall so quickly. Is that tickle, Josh? Wow. A lot of them really falling into his mouth there. That can't be too comfortable. Yeah, you got to keep that mouth closed for me, please. Oh, this is, this is a legendary moment in Bananas television history right here. What a different man we are about to see. I'm seeing a tan line. How long have you had this thing on your face, Josh? Over a year. Oh, no. Okay, see, now we've got it down to a much more controllable. How about you lather him up with some shaving cream, and we'll get ready to rock with the actual razor. Here you go, buddy. Here's the shaving Thank cream. Thank you. Got you, dog. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Nice. That's really, how does that taste? <laughs> does that taste good? He kind of <laughs> just... Did I do a good job? Oh, wow. Yep. I need some sort of a towel or some. Biko, just gonna oh, put it on my is, pants. This is oh, sloppy. That's hey guys, make sure not to, not to miss Brett Helton. Yeah. 
Pico, there's a game going on over there. You can make sure to broadcast it. This isn't. Let's throw Josh's shaving in a, yeah, perfect. Oh, you guys are so good at your jobs. Uh, Danny Hosley pops this one right side. Sam Claycamp gets rid of the cowboy hat and runs out of room as that one clips the sidewall. It's really not gliding as well as I would like it to. I'm not going to lie to you. That's probably not something you want your barber to say to you, Josh. I've got a different kind of razor in my bag if you want to try it. It just feels like it's catching a little bit. Is that causing you any sort of pain? Not yet. Just, emo <laughs> just emotional pain? Yeah. Sure. Are you going to cry? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Dustin Baber is going to grab this one for out number one here in the See, I feel like it's just six. grabbing and it's not... You need to use the electric a little more? I could try. Let's get in there. Let's try it. Let's get you right, Josh. We need to take care of this. I mean, it's at a really good length right now. This is what $15,000 you know. donated to Bananas Foster will get you. It's you look so handsome, man. Oh, Kyle. He's a good-looking guy. I mean, he was good-looking with the mustache, too. But There's this. an upper lip under that mustache. Yeah, Correct. Is. There's Let's something hiding in there. Let's try this one more time. Okay, back to the electric razor here is Brett Helton, as well as Chase Acuff, Dustin Bieber, and Reese Hampton. I'll combine powers for a delightful little dance and a hot shot into the glove of a diving brace at Bloomer for out number two. Good. Okay, let's see what this has got going on. Schnazzy play by the Boomer. Slap a star next to it in your scorebook at home. And we check back in on the shaving of Josh How's it Talewski. look? How's it look, Pico? It's looking pretty good. So, I mean, I don't actually... It's pretty much just down to us less than a stubble. I don't use shaving cream myself, and I'm a straight razor guy only. I really? use water and maybe some like conditioner if I You're have it. You're crazy water. pants. Yeah. You also use the same razor for, what was it, like 10 years? Yeah, and, and they're disposable. Yeah. This one, a home run in an elevator shaft. Joe Lytle able to find where it was going to land and fall it in. And Brett Helton has retired seven straight bananas and is still a two-point lead for the party animals as we head to the seventh you can inning. blow your nose. You got a little bit of shaving cream in there. You look so handsome. My beautiful Kyle. You were beautiful before, Josh. The mustache doesn't make the man. The man makes the mustache. Wow, look at that guy. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. I'm not even sure who that I is. I saw myself. Holy cow. Brings me back to week one of your internship. That's a fact. This is Is fun. that the last time you were hairless? Yes, correct. Boy. How about some, how about that banana floor? Well, this is really thrilling, groundbreaking. You're so handsome. <laughs> just almost at a loss. I want to call words. you Joshua now without the mustache. Oh, You're Josh with the mustache. Saying, By the way, the banana nanas dancing away with surprise star Christian Deerman. How about Mr. Electric with the ladies out there? <laughs> this is really something. Oh, by the way, we're entering the seventh inning, which means it's time to give away a free pair of hokas. And I'm going to hit the link in the comment section for the description of the video. Fill out all your contact information. And then for our buzzword, it is going to be JJ tonight. J and J. In honor of our dear friend, J.J. Falcone. Yeah, Mr. Electric fired up after his performance with the Banana Nanas. The monster, Matt Malatesta, gives him some sunglasses to celebrate. We will now put our way into the top of the seven. And the whole chat is currently on fire. And on fire, I mean just fire emojis everywhere. Um, a couple suggestions. I should have shaved upwards instead of downwards. I've never done that. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, somebody wanted me to wax it, Josh, if you want me to get back in there. Not I'm good. Infield single for Bryson Bloomer as Ryan Cox tries to grab him from deep in the hole. Never had a chance. So the Boomer now two for three on the night. And then... Pico, your host mother, Paula, would like for me to tweeze it. It's a good idea. And then we saw Megan replying to the tweezing with a, no, a wax could have done the job. 
You have some experience with waxing. Well, at one time, as the donut mat batter of the night will step into the box, Joe Lytle, um, I got my chest waxed once upon a time. Would not recommend it. I watched it happen. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. If I had hair in my chest to wax, I would do it. You'd just be pulling off skin. <laughs> Many people think I'm an Olympic sprinter. Or a swimmer. That's what I meant. Yes. That's a fact. No friction on you. People own. just think I'm an Olympic sprinter because of how fast I am. Well. That's not a fact, I don't think. Josh, are you faster than Biko? We have never... <clears throat> oh! Excuse yeah, me, guys. He's a new man. <laughs> wow. He doesn't mustache. know how to speak. I'm so sorry. 2-2 <laughs> two, two count to Joe Lytle here, looking to gift this crowd of 4,000. Oh, and he'll do it. There's the donuts for the people. Joe draws a line outside of the plate, which I thought it caught for you. I don't think Joe is right in his idea of the strike zone there. I saw it from up above. That thing, that thing had plate. It wasn't even on the black. Clear as day. I think Trackman has that as a strike, fellas. Good It'll job by us. Strikeout number two for Zach Phillips, and now the Bananas are firing donuts into the stands because he was our donut hitter tonight. And Duncan is providing some tasty treats for a full capacity crowd. I haven't had any donuts recently. I did have a crumble cookie today because, as I was not aware, yesterday was Danny Hosley's birthday. So a little special late happy birthday to Danny Hosley. He turned 24 yesterday. Jason Swan now at the dish, quickly behind no balls and two strikes as Dakota McFadden has to run out and clear some debris. Another front door bender. Did you just pronounce the S in debris? Yes. Is that how it's pronounced? Some debris. Debr There's debris in the way. The seven, the six debris of Kevin Bacon. Correct. That doesn't feel right to me. That one squibbed out down the first baseline, and we'll do it all again at 0-2. Swanee battling here, had a sprint his first time. He bounced it to a fielder's choice last time up. I realized I hit some shaving cream under my desk up here, and now it's finding its way back onto my fingers as I grip my You can table. wipe it on my pants if you'd like. We're wearing white tonight. Appreciate that, buddy. I'm gonna take advantage of that. Just rubs right in. Line drive into left field, base knock for Swanee. Off on the pitch and going first to third is Bryson Bloomer. And the party animals have something cooking here in the top of the seven. Runners on the corners with just one away. And that was a perfectly executed hit and run for the party animals there. You saw Bloomer off and running. Swan able to take that one into left field. A guy who was able to spray the ball to all fields. So really hard for this Bananas infield and outfield to know which way to necessarily shift this guy. And again, he finds a gap. And now the party animals with runners on the corners and a chance to get yet another run and possible point is Phillips tries quickly to try and pick off Swan and he'll be back in safely. Jennifer in the K-Club chat asking for the buzzword again. It is JJ. It's JJ in honor of JJ Falcone. We had a ceremony for tonight. We relived the most amazing first pitch that counts in the history of Banana Land. With a prosthetic leg, JJ fired an absolute strike right down the pipe. And this is an event where we've seen the likes of CC Sabathia, Dustin Pedroia, Kevin Euclid all throw balls. And JJ, while battling cancer with a prosthetic leg, just absolutely threw one right down Broadway. Just the greatest thing that I think that I've ever been a part of in this six years of banana ball, um, maybe even my whole entire life is. It's such a cool moment. I'm surprised they didn't jump straight through the roof of the press box as that one gets to the bottom of the zone and Phillips has his third strikeout. That is a huge second out in the inning. Here's Tyler Gillum. The world's tallest pitcher, Dakota Phillips Albrechtes. Stilts, a 
has had some really solid outings on the tour. This is just about as tough a situation as he has been given. Lumer off of third, Swan off of first, and Mike Vibasis, who has enough power to drive a ball out to Tybee Island, will be the batter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long ways away, Biko. That's yeah, only about 20, there's 25 a, minutes by car. There's a, uh, a poll in the uh, YouTube chat going. Josh with no stash, yay or nay? Would you vote he's handsome or baby boy, exclamation point? Right now, 68% of the audience says he's handsome. How about them apples, Josh? Well, thank you. You're blushing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. What do you have to say to the 32% who say baby boy as Jason Swan steals second? To each their own. <laughs> that is very mature of you. Yes. Welcome to my world, Josh. Peter misses the outside corner. 2-0 count now on Bava. Vasis has a sprint and a strikeout on the night. Is there any non-mustache etiquette I need to be aware of? That one crank just barely foul. Um, a couple feet away from a two-run hit. I don't think you need to wipe your face as much whenever you're eating, which is probably a good thing. Oh, that, is, that rocks. Have you given it a, a touch up there with the tongue to see what you're working with up there? <laughs> Not yet. No? You won't have to worry about any mustache hairs getting in your mouth, which is a good thing. 2-1 misses down. Now three balls in one strike, and Stilts is one bad one away from allowing a sprint that would score two. He finds the zone and Baba fouls it back. And that's a big pitch from Dakota Stilts off Britt. Really good job by him being able to dial it in and find the strike zone on a 3-1 offering. Now with the payoff, can he continue to strand inherited runners for the bananas? He will not as Mike Bavasis will draw the sprint, stay in first base, and Bloomer and Swan come around to score two runs here in the seventh. And now, the party animals will celebrate at the dish by cutting some more of Brett Helton's hair. Kyle, as a pitcher, I mean, it's part of your job. But if you're Zach Phillips, I'm sure you're pretty upset about your two runners that you left on base scoring. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, you got to kind of, as Reggie says, you know, you got to hold yourself accountable. Um, you never want to go out there and allow runners on, especially, you know, if you can control it with a walk or a hit by pitch. How about that? Excuse me, swing from Dustin Baber. He slaps it into right. And Colin Ledbetter, pinch running for the second time tonight. We'll go station to station. And Dustin Baber's bat continues to heat up for the party animals. That now extends a four-game hit streak for Dustin Baber. And he's so good at going the opposite way. You saw just a little bit of a late jump by Eric Jones Jr. Surprising considering he really wasn't trying to hold on Colin Ledbetter. As now Dalton Malden has a hard time with the baseball. And Chase Acuff will reach on an error from Malden. Now the base is loaded for the animals. I wouldn't I'm that in I'm, pen, not, I'm not sure that's an error, Josh. Slow roller? Yes. He didn't yeah. have anywhere to go. We Correct. Gotta... Eric Jones Jr. wasn't covering yeah. first base. He's going for the ball. Normally, you'd have you know, just about any other pitcher over there. And that one shot into right. It's going to fall in front of Danny Hosley. Another run will score for the Animals. They have now played in three. And Reese Hampton, two for three on the night. Perhaps his 39th ribeye on the tour. That is three straight hits. Well, Dakota stilts all Britain as well as the ball for sprint. As he has come into the ball game. Now Jake Skull will try and keep the merry round going. And that is also another multi-hit game for Reese Hampton on this tour. In fact, it's Hampton's 28th multi-hit game, and now he is six hits away from 100 on this year's world tour. 2-0 count to Skull, who is a flyout, ground out, and a strikeout tonight. He's the ninth party animal to swing it here in the top of the seventh. I think we need, somehow need to put your mustache back on your face, Josh. I think the, the bananas aren't having, you know, the greatest luck since we've shaved that thing off. Are you okay if I try and pick it up off the ground <laughs> and get it back on your face? You know, it's up to you, man. Another beautiful a pro of being mustacheless is you can put one of those sweet sticker mustaches on that everybody's got. One pop left side. The fans could get the bananas out of a bases-loaded jam. They failed to snag it in. 
Bounces harmlessly into the ABR Stadium Club. Payoff is slapped towards left. Michael D positioned perfectly to stop the bleeding. But the party animals push three runs across. And now it is time to found, find out the pros and cons of not having a mustache. Josh, you of course are our host of this PowerPoint. Uh, that is exactly right. I've, I've done a lot of thinking already since losing the mustache. So let's get into some pros and cons of life without a mustache. And I'll start you guys off with the pros, of course. I mean, first of all, support for Bananas Foster. That's the biggest thing. It's the reason we did it. So very happy about that. No more Paula slander. Paula's <laughs> not going to get upset at me anymore for, for having that thing. Uh, I will save $1,756 on mustache supplies and grooming. Is that a month? Is that a year? A, a year. life? That's a year. Okay. Uh, no what? more duels with other mustachioed fellas. I have found myself in those situations more times than I would have liked. Iowa's mustache law is going to do a little recall, no longer apply to me. They're vicious. It's not itchy. Uh, no more sponta spontaneous mustache combustion possibilities. So 0.00001% of all mustaches spontaneously combust. It's not going to happen. And it will not sell send me any telepathic messages. Sometimes it tries to communicate to me, tell me what to do. Uh, but anyways, here are the cons of, of course, not having a mustache. Uh, my mustachioed members of America card is revoked. <laughs> Biker groups and lumberjacks will no longer give me their respect. I've got a cold face. <laughs> uh, no more late night mustache snacks. You know, sometimes I find a little Cheeto in there. It's not going to happen. Uh, girls, probably going to call me less. <laughs> um, yeah, that guy's not happy. <laughs> I have now forgotten how to properly utilize power tools and work a grill. Uh, so that is a that, big loss. That's devastating. Forbes called me, told me I was on their 25 mustaches under 25 list. Now I'm disqualified. And uh, the loss of Top Gun Summer. It is, it is long gone, guys. Now what I'm going to do without this mustache, Yeah. repeatedly touch my upper lip. Got now I, I have done it. Pinch myself to make sure I'm not dreaming, hold a funeral, mourn. Probably wear a paper sack over my head in public, and you know, somewhere along the way, I'll grow another mustache. As Brett Helton throws first pitch to Dan Oberst, and Reese Hampton is underneath this one, back flipping, and no, he does not come up with the catch. Reese nailed it three nights ago. It looked like he was going to come down with it again as Chase Acuff asking Chris Walker. Could that one have been on the exchange? We'll get another look here. It's in the glove. Oh, and then it flicks right down into the ground. Just not quite enough squeeze. We've got a $50 donation in the chat. Here's to Josh. What a great cause. How does that make you feel, Josh? Excellent. I, I feel great about this decision overall because it is, it's great to help Bananas Foster. Cut and a miss from Michael Deeb as you get the tail end of Macy O'Harrison's wrecking ball dance as he coaches third base for the Nanners. Your favorite thing ever, Josh. I have something I can't get off my head or out of my mind. What are you spending in a year? $1,726 on for your mustache. $1,756, guys. On what? Combs, oil, I mean. How many combs do you need? Do you lose these combs? Look, when you travel to as many tour stops as we do, yeah, you lose one or I've, two a lot. I've got to hold you accountable. I just didn't know there was so much in going into it on the back end. Ball spanked out to left and struck well, 91 miles an hour off the bat, but Jake Skoll able to retire his counterpart. Deeb has now flown out to all three outfielders. So it looks like Brett Hel Helton is, you know, starting to Coming into his final phases of morphing into a new man. He looks like he's got most of his hair off of his head. But Jackson Olsen haircut currently. I mean, he's got a couple locks still flowing around, but they're few and far between. I think my favorite um, point that you brought up was that lumberjacks and biker gangs would not. Yes. They, they've lost all respect for you. That's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow. It stinks. I was really having a good time with those guys. <laughs> piece of the world that I've never gotten to discover myself. Maybe one day I'll wear a mustache. At the fault of being a hairless man? Correct. 
something weird coming from an Italian. <laughs> One two to Eric Jones Jr. One for two with a single and a strikeout. And he is clipped by the front door 65 mile an hour curveball. Sixth time on the tour, EJ has been plunked by a pitch. And that brings up the inning tying run in the form of Jackson Olsen. Do you guys happen to know when the last time Malachi pinned ran? The fourth inning. Correct. Who did he run for? Eric Jones Jr. Correct. Okay, good. So he can run for Jackson here as the potential tying run. That's good. Olsen has blown out to Skoll and Hampton. Cutter nearly hits him. He fouls it off himself anyway. Count 0 and 2. And that's usually the strategy you see the Bananas use when they're down more than one point, is waiting for Malachi to be inserted until he is the inning tying or inning go-ahead runner on base. Or, of course, I'm available when, you know, they would, they would want to implement me in that situation. That one struck well out to left center. Hampton on his horse. Can't make the tumbling catch. Throws his glove away in disgust. Dan Oberst is going to score from second. A Cub with the relay throw not in time. Olsen up to second. And the inning time run now in scoring position. The Nanners played their first run of the night off Brett Helton. And that is a big knock from Jackson Olsen. It was a really interesting base running situation for the Bananas overall, who have seen Reese Hampton track down quite a few balls in Grayson Stadium since we've come back to Savannah. This one just out of the reach of Reese, and you saw Jones and Oberst right on top of each other, but Maceo Harrison at third gave Oberst the wave, meaning Jones could go up to third, and then Jackson, seeing that the throw was made towards home plate, decided to break for second base and was able to get in the scoring position. Dustin Baber will grab this one for a huge second out for Brett Helton. The run he gave up, just like the two runs he allowed in his start last Saturday in Des Moines, not earned because Dan Oberst reached on the trick play, missed. He's now retired McFadden all four times. And we'll try to do the same to Bill Leroy, who he's gotten the ground out to second base and short. That was a really good job by you, Josh. You literally took the words out of my mouth on that base running situation. That's exactly what I was going to point out. Thank you, Kyle. I was going to say it before you, but my mustache hair got stuck in my mouth and I couldn't talk. You wouldn't know anything about that, though, would you? <laughs> Not a darn thing. Really well executed changeup on the first offering to Leroy, who does have one homer on the tour. 14 walk-offs for the Nanners. Twin Prince of Banana Land alongside our guest in the booth, Cowboy Kyle. The two of them both in their sixth year as Bananas, second as pros. And now Brett. Leroy behind 0-2 as Brett Helton swings. He's shaking everything he's got left. Correct, and it's not a lot. <laughs> Jones off third, Mitchell off second. The 0-2 coming to Leroy. Next ball high. This is one where Brett Helton probably just focusing on trying to induce some soft contact. Bill Leroy very hard to strike out. Cut and a miss! How about that for a broadcaster's jinx? Helton strands the tying run on base, strikes out the potential inning winning run. And the party animals win the seven three to one. They lead three to nothing in the all important points category. You gotta stop doing that, man. Get another look at it. It's the change up once again. What a powerful pitch. Really good. Right on right is a is a hard thing to do. The change up itself is a very hard pitch to master, but right on right's even more difficult. Bill Leroy's strikeout percentage is eight percent. Ryan Cox at six point three percent is the only man on the Bananas who strikes out less. And I would say this man has about a 2.6% chance of outdashing the flash here. Couldn't agree more. He, he's going to get a 90 feet head start in the 360 foot race. Now Malachi Mitchell jogging out the gate, starting to turn the Jets on as our man running with bare feet is coming around third. He's not going to touch the bag. Here comes Flash. And it is burning speed at the end. Appreciate the effort from our contestant. But he has not outdashed the flash. That was, I mean, the combination of bare feet on the mound and a head first dive in shorts is, it's really buying in. I don't know what else to say about it. You wouldn't find me doing that. You'll I probably see that guy at tryouts. You think so? 
I've got to say, just touching, foreshadowing on that, I'm very excited. I found out that I get to go to three of the four tryouts that we'll be holding this year in the offseason, and I'm very excited. And, you know, just um, excited to be a part of, you know, what the future is going to be. Breaking news. Look like. Four tryouts this offseason. As of what I've heard so far. Okay. Some behind-the-scenes knowledge. Very much could change. I think Bill just threw that ball 116 miles an hour from behind the plate. Trackman had it at 122. That's pretty good. Correct. You know you can throw a baseball that hard. Well, Bill Leroy, king of Dublin, Georgia, he is built different. Get a look at the haircut going on for Brett Hilton, who has thrown seven innings of one run ball. It was not an earned run. He just picked up his third K, which matched his total on the complete game shutout he tossed well, Saturday Saturdays ago in Des Moines. Vincent had the first pitch of the inning there up. Doesn't matter where he had that pitch because Michael Deeb will grab this fly ball in left and Tanner Thomas retired. He was the only man who did not get to hit in the three run top of the seventh. And now Bryson Bloomer, who started that rally off with an infield single in the six hole, two for three on the night. Try and jump start another rally. And he's not going to do it. In on the hands, his former Bananas teammate Bill Leroy in foul territory. Has that one for out number two. Great work by Bill Leroy there, not having any interference from Bryson Bloomer, trying to go down the line on that pop-up, able to evade Bloomer, not lose his range over there in foul territory, and still come up with that high pop off the bat. DJ the Invader, when he's at his best, works some very quick innings. He's his four-seam, two-seam, and cut fastballs, as well as a slider in his best pitch, a changeup. And now sets his sights on Joe Lytle, who homered off him the last time these two faced, which was on Friday night. And he strokes a single. Trackman had it at 90 miles off the bat as Dalton Malden tries to throw behind Lytle. And he's going to scamper up to second on the E4. Yeah, probably some ill-advised back throwing there from Dalton. Now uh, Joe moving up to second there. And that bat, that ball off the bat at 90 um, exit velocity. And that raises the question. I know you guys um, spent some time hitting some BP at the field yesterday, Pico. Yes. You probably had probably your fair share of exit velos over 90, I would say. Well, with Josh as my BP pitcher, is we now get a conference between Chris Walker and Vincent Chapman on how many bases Joe Lytle should get. I mean, it did come from the field. If it went into the dugout, Lytle should have third base. And that is what they're going to do. Two bases on an overthrow. On any base you've already ascertained, and Lytle had possession of first. So that is a two-base error from the Songbird of our generation. Yeah, I think I lived probably about 85 to 100, maybe 105 on my exit velos. A bunch of them heading straight back to the L screen that Josh was hiding behind. That ball off the end of the bat, so Jason Swan doesn't get all of it. Michael Deeb has his second fly ball of the inning. And the two out single and two base error does not harm the Nanners. They have a chance to get their first point of the night with just one run here in the bottom of the eighth. I was a real line drive hitter yesterday. Yeah. Nothing close to leaving the ballpark, unfortunately. I'm really glad that nobody suffered any serious injuries. This is very exciting here. We're about to turn Grayson Stadium yellow. And after that, we will have a big hair reveal from Brett, Brett Hilton on the mound. We're watching the 82nd banana ball game played here on our tour, the 112th banana ball game ever played in front of fans. Really appreciate you spending your Labor Day with us here on BTV. I'm Pico Scala alongside Josh Tolevsky and the ace of this banana squad, Cowboy Kyle Lewix. A mustacheless Josh Tolevsky, I must add. It's a fact, thanks to Kyle's handiwork. I really tried my dress. You know, this being the last um, yellow and last home game of the season here in Savannah, you know, that almost works a, a tear up out of my eye getting to, getting to do this all these games with you two. Warms the heart so close to the land you grew, grew up in in Richmond Hill, Georgia. Not too far. Definitely didn't think I'd be doing this six plus years ago. But boy, is it funny how life works sometimes. 
Sometimes all you need is a temp contract for you and Bill. A couple days is all you need. Savannah, Georgia, we love you so much. Okay, let's throw it down to the young professor. Actually, it's going to be Isaac Powell to tell us about Brett's hair. As you have seen all night long, we have been cutting Brett Helton's hair. And now, we welcome you, Brett Helton. He has cut over 22 inches of hair that is going to be donated to Wigs for Kids, which also means that we have also been able to collect over $22,000, which is going to be benefiting Bananas Foster. Everyone here in Grayson Stadium, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much, Brett. Brett Helton passes the Ziploc bag of hair off to Isaac. I get shades of my seventh grade English teacher, Mr. Rubenstein, who kept bags of his former students' hair in a metal little shelving unit he had in his classroom. I don't like that one bit. He was a good teacher. Why did he... Was, is your hair on that shelf? No, I wanted to give it to him, and then when I was getting my hair cut, I chickened out in the barber shop because it just felt so weird. That is, that's probably the weirdest thing I've heard all year. Yeah, it felt weird to ask that my hair on the ground would be swept up. And I think I actually hate that. What I don't hate is the buzz cut on Brett Hilton. He I mean, looks fantastic. He's, I mean, he's a good looking guy with long hair. I've seen his um, license ID picture. Um, which is when he had a buzz cut. So I had some idea of what it would look like, but I mean, he looks he looks great. He might be more aerodynamic. You might see, you know, a couple 91, 92s here. He's gonna cut down on his drag and wind resistance for sure. That's correct. Biko knows nothing about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> really, not too adept in physics. <laughs> well, I'm talking about you being hairless. Oh, okay. I thought you were. You don't know anything about the friction. No, you're a very intelligent man. I'm actually pretty decent at physics, thanks to Mr. Vanderpool. Shout out two Saugerties high school teachers in one half inning as Brett Helton continues his really strong night. No long hair. He doesn't care. He gets Ryan Cox to bounce out to him. There's now 0 for 3 on the night. We're going to have a... Vinny DeRubius pinch hitting for Danny Hosley, who was 1 for 2 on the night. Big time pinch hit here for Vinny, looking to, to rebound after last night's pinch hit. Um, unfortunately, punching out. I know he's kind of beating himself up about you know, not being prepared for it to come when it came. Um, had a couple conversations with him about it being my, my locker mate and uh, looking for him to turn around here and get the Bananas a run. But the eighth inning is a great spot for the Bananas to pinch hit Vinny DeRubius. They've done it a lot this season. And in fact, Vinny is seven for 17 in pinch hit opportunities in the eighth as Joe Lytle will roll this one up the first baseline and get the out on Vinny DeRubius. And Cowboy Kyle has to leave us to go be a ring dude, so he will exit stage left hastily. So the fans will have an idea what inning is coming up. It's going to be the last inning, and they would have no idea if Kyle didn't hold up the sign that said that. Nasty curveball there from Helton for his fourth strikeout. Pitches does the job for the Italian Stallion and a barreled ball, 93 off the bat. From Dalton Malden is a line out. Here's the young professor. Cast our gaze upon the scoreboard as we head to the top of the ninth inning. As it sits, it looks like this. The party animals have three points and the bananas are yet to put one up. But here's the thing about the game of banana ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means this is the last opportunity in the 2023 season for the Bananas to score some runs and put up some points on the board at home. I believe they can do it. Grayson Stadium, do you believe? Then get ready, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final inning. The party animals have won three straight games. They are three outs away from making it four in a row. And they're looking to add some insurance against the best pitcher on the tour, Danny Hosley. who will be on the bump for the Nanners as our friend Cowboy Kyle has 
we had prophesized is now letting the folks know this is our last inning. His counterpart is Jake Lealios for the party animal side. And Hosley will be coming in for 7, 8, 9. Clay Camp, Vavasis, and Faber here in the top of the ninth. Yeah, it's a good situation for Danny Hosley facing the bottom of the order. And this is game number 49 for Danny Hosley on the mound this season. An earned run average at 2.08. So when you look at the ERA plus data, the 248 mark means Danny Hosley more than two times better than the tour average pitcher. And he is leading the way with all for all pitchers with 11 wins on this season. Really showing you how critical the ninth inning is in Banana ball and 44 points are in this season only 24 points lost just continues to do terrific work with almost a five strikeout to one walk ratio and you get a look at those numbers right there I mean that is what really stands out to me is when the guy has struck out 82 in 56 in the third innings and has only allowed 34 hits and 17 sprints that is insane stuff from Danny Do It All. He spent the first eight innings of this ball game out in right field. Now Dakota McFadden will move from the extra hitter spot to patrol right. And first pitch for Sam Clay Camp. A fastball. Ryan Cox behind his back collects it. Third trick play of the night, 134th of the tour, and it is a beauty. Not the most fluent trick play we've ever seen from Ryan Cox, but just did a magnificent job staying with the ball, keeping it in front of him, and knowing the trick play that he was trying to make there. Excellent throw on the first there. A good stretch again by EJ. Make sure they can nail Clay Camp. Second pitch of the outing is another fastball from Haas, who mixes in change-ups and 12-6 curveballs. It is the heater that gets the first two pieces of work there. That one on the 12-6 curve, steal strike two. He throws the same pitch, gets the same result, and four pitches, two outs. There is his 83rd K on the tour. And this is where you're seeing that dominance of Danny Hosley being able to throw the fastballs and the breaking balls for consistent strikes. It's a big part of why the party animals are batting below 200 in the ninth innings this season, because most of the time they're facing Danny do it all. Bill Leroy hops out of the crouch and puts the finishing touches on a historic five pitch inning. That is unbelievable stuff from Danny Hosley. A one minute and 15 second inning. And now that is the fifth fastest inning of all time in Banana Ball. We had seen the fifth fastest inning tied by Brett Helton earlier tonight. And now Helton and Drew Gillespie with a pair of a minute and 18 second innings are bumped back by Danny Duidall, the fastest inning in his young banana ball career. The young professor letting the people know that the Nanners need three runs to tie this game, four to win it. And they're going to have to do it against Brett Helton, who is back out for the ninth and trying to put the finishing touches in his second complete game on his second complete game, rather, across the last two outings. And this, if Helton could do it, would be the first complete game in banana ball history where a pitcher actually is credited with nine innings pitched. That's right, because we have seen in the past some complete games, but situations where the Bananas were able to score and walk off in innings before those three outs could be recorded. So technically, you can't necessarily credit those innings to the pitchers despite throwing in them. So this is a really cool possible achievement that Brett Helton could accomplish for the party animals and just continue to extend that winning streak and their chances at winning this 2023 World Tour. Helton was credited with eight innings. He pitched across nine innings in his complete game a couple Saturdays ago in Des Moines, Iowa. He's going to have a tough task here in the bottom of the ninth, the top of the order. Starting with that man, D.R. Meadows, Dan Oberst, and Michael Deeb, due to swing it after him. All three of them in your shot there. And now we focus in on the doctor. He was flown out to right, grounded out to Helton, back on the bump and popped out to Joe Lytle, the catcher. The pride of Colorado Springs. 
starts Meadows off with a very slow 67 mile an hour front door breaking ball first strike. And once again, this is what we talked about early in the game. Brett Helton has been able to keep DR Meadows off the base pass, which has been huge in limiting the rest of that banana's order. And here, Bryson Bloomer goes between the legs, gets the trick play, and once again, it is Helton keeping DR Meadows off the bags and getting a big first out here in the ninth, two outs away from that complete game. 36th trick play of the tour for Bryson Bloomer, who gets some more action and throws that one away. Dan Oberst, who reached his last time on a trick play missed by Jake Skolin left, is gonna get two bases on the E5 from Bryson Bloomer. And that's a tough play for Bryson Bloomer to have to make. He had to move back behind the bag to get that high chop from Oberst. And you know Bloomer's got a great arm, a former outfielder in his collegiate days for the Bananas. Tried to fire that one as fast as he could to Sam Claycamp, but one that went a little high and awry from Sam. His 2021 Bananas teammate is on second base because of it, and now Michael Deeb in his third world tour. It's a backdoor bender for strike one. He has flown out to right and center. He lined out to left his last time. Did not agree with that strike call for Vincent Chapman. He's behind 0-2. Bounces that one into the four hole. Backhanded by Sam Claycamp, who flips to Houghton. It is not handled. Another error from the party animals. Dan Oberst will score to notch the first point of the night for the Nanners, and Deeb replaces him on second. And the Bananas are already pointing towards the third base bag, trying to say that Michael Deeb should be credited with third base, having already been trying to go to second before that ball was thrown away, but I do not think that Vincent Chapman and Chris Walker are going to confirm what the Bananas are looking for here. It will be the wrong decision if they get deep third base. He was still running towards first when the error occurred. Yes, yeah, so they once again are right in the decision, and Michael Deeb stays on second. He will be pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. Chris Walker calling time. And full confusion here. Deeb is going to stay out there. And as we talked about just a couple innings ago, the Nanners are going to save Malachi Mitchell for when he could be the potential inning tying or winning run. As Brett Helton runs into his catcher, Joe Lytle, there was never a tag. Helton saying there was. But for now, EJ is safe at first, and there's runners on the corners with just one out. And this seems like a time in which the party animals have not used their challenge. Yes, they are going to try and use the challenge to see if they were able to get a tag on EJ. A little check swing from Eric Jones Jr. And this is an enormous call in this game. We'll get another look at it. Avery Hughes and Chris Walker ready to take another look. Here comes the collision. I don't see a tag. I see a tag. I do, no, I do see a tag. Josh sees a tag. BK, okay, come, come. Pull it back. I don't see how you could overturn that. No, I don't, I don't know it, where you see not, a tag, you know, Josh. It's not definitive. Correct. If it's not definitive, I don't think we can overturn the call. Correct. Yep. I, I say it stands. It can't be overturned. There is not inconclusive. There is not. Okay, this angle could tell us something, but it does not. That is a safe run. We runner. can't overturn it. There's not enough evidence. One more angle. One more angle. Oh, baby! I don't know about that one. It looks like he may have tagged him. I couldn't tell you, though. But can we say it's inconclusive? 
Looks inconclusive to it's me. It's got to be inconclusive. This call is going to stand. Boy, this is becoming a disaster of an inning for the party animals who have committed two errors. And now Brett Helton unable to get the tag on Eric Jones Jr., who has now been pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. He represents the game's tying run. Jackson Olsen in the box represents the game winning run. That one's off the end of the bat, though. Tanner Thomas will grab it. Tagging from third is deep to throw home. Not in time. It is a one-point ball game with one out left. And it's going to be up to Dakota McFadden to try and be the Bananas hero. Both runs scored have been unearned. And Dakota McFadden, who has nine home runs, second most on the Bananas, third most on the tour. Represents the game-winning run. He's behind 0-1 as Helton sneaks a two-seam fastball in. Still see Sam Claycamp over there at the first base back, holding on Malachi Mitchell. This is a situation where even with two outs, you still see the Bananas trying to get a runner in the scoring position so a base knot could bring around the run, especially Flash the Kid. We'll see if he's running here with two strikes on D-Mac. 0-2 to McFadden. Helton's given him a fastball and a changeup so far. Peters yanked outside. Trackman had it at 90 miles an hour, so Helton still has some gas in the tank. Here with two outs and a 1-2 count on D-Mac. Bender misses down and away. And deuces are wild with the game's tying run at first, the game's winning run in the right-handed batter's box. Fouled straight back. Like a cutter right on the outside corner, so we'll do it again. Well, you heard Sean Fluke earlier in this broadcast talk about the tough battles that Dakota McFadden has against him. He is putting up yet another here against Brett Helton when in these situations across the tour, it's McFadden batting 286 against Brett. Another 2-2, two -two, another fastball. It is fouled back. Brett Helton has had 22 inches of his hair cut off tonight. He's trying to put the finishing touch on his second straight complete game. It would be only the fifth in banana ball history. And another foul ball as the cutter is just tipped on the outside corner. Another 2-2. Two -two. That ball's blasted, deep out to left. Jake skulls underneath it, in front of the track. He's got it! The party animals have won four straight. Brett Helton survives. And the animals are just four games back of the Bananas with five games left on the tour. And it is further history for the party animals as they stay alive in the tour. Brett Helton completes the first nine credited inning complete game in banana ball history. What a gutsy performance from Helton. We will celebrate with the boys as he backflips, back rolls, and they are church clapping. Four straight wins. They are now 29 and 33 against the Nanners. And heading to Milwaukee. A series sweep away from making this thing insanely interesting going into the final two games in New York. That's it for our homestand here, the last homestand of the 2023 season. And I know there's so many faces that we have seen all season long from the bottom of all of our hearts here with the Savannah Bananas. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here, not just tonight, but all season long, the greatest fans in all of the sports. We've got a few games left on the road. Make sure you tune into BTV, our YouTube channel. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, all of our players, all of our cast, we will be out front signing autographs, taking pictures with each and every one of you for our plaza party. Until next year, here in Savannah, we love you, and good night, everyone. Trackman had the curveball at 67 miles an hour and it left the bat at 95. It was struck well by DMAC, but you've heard it said a couple times tonight, a little too much launch angle as that left the bat at 39.69 degrees. Oh, hey, ho, welcome up into the broadcast booth. He is Josh Jalewski, I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for sticking with us here on Labor Day and enjoying the 82nd game of the tour. The party animals are red hot, and this thing is insanely interesting as we head to Milwaukee next Friday. It is a fascinating situation between the bananas and the party animals as they are red hot and just continue to roll out these complete games against the bananas. Clearly, they have figured out a way to go about combating this offense that was very dangerous in the middle of the season but has slowed down particularly as of late and for Brett Helton we talk about that at bat against Dakota McFadden that went eight pitches it really speaks to the volume of the pitcher that Brett Helton is in being able to in a 2-2 count continue to throw consistent strikes fouled up on DMAC then go with that gutsy off-speed curveball DMAC got a hold of it pretty good, but the confines of Grayson Stadium were friendly to the party animals, and Jake Skull had the fist pump to flourish that final out for the party animals. Yeah, that is a fact. What an incredible performance. As you said, the first ever credited with nine innings complete game in banana ball history. It's Brett's second in as many outings in which he has thrown 17 innings as far as the statistics goes and has not allowed an earned run. He has given up two unearned runs in each of those outings as Yvonne Trezak and Aubrey scoot on through. Okay, we do have one more surprise. Before we give you the surprise, which will be a, a final homage to the legendary BTV viewers of ages past, uh, we will give away our pair of hokas right now. Should, well, Chad, I would love to ask my coordinating producer, Chad, should we give away a pair of hokas now, or should the folks have a performance first? Wow, that is incredible to hear. Okay, two pairs of hokas coming up. Let me get the winners. All righty, drum roll, please. Our first winner is Analia Alves. Analia Alves, thank you so much for watching and entering our competition tonight. Congratulations on your hokas, Analia. And our second winner, drum roll, please. Wow. Jeremy Powell, Jeremy Powell, you get our second pair of hokas. They will be just as good as the first pair that Analia is getting. Once again, thank you all to, uh, to all the folks who watched. We had the most folks entering for the hokas tonight, except for our ESPN2 broadcast at the start of August. So in the YouTube world, this is a record-breaking hokas evening. It was an amazing broadcast, an amazing game overall, and just awesome to see all the fan love just throughout the game in the YouTube comments and the K-Club stream. Yeah, could not agree more. Steve Kellogg, once again, thank you for wearing your Edma Eduardo Malinowski NIL jersey in solidarity with me rocking the old Ryan Kennedy tonight. Okay, uh, now to our final surprise for you this evening. It is time to get a little musical. But before that, we're going to get a little peek behind the curtains. Chad Reese, what do we have for the people, buddy? Oh, okay. You're not and you will see what happens when we're on the other side. All right, see you in a second.
is a gentleman. The Southlands of Swag. Time to go home. Time to go home, folks. And it makes 
pass it fast with one more thing. We are the Sultans. That's us. We are the Sultans of Sweden. Chad Reese, from Lutar, 110-note streak. I mean, you can't beat that. Seven phrases in a row. You nailed them, Josh. 84%, 51 notes for Chris. Really good work. And I hit six notes in a row at one point. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Wow. Woo. You kidding me? I'm so me? sorry. I'm, I'm in the way. I know. I appreciate you ducking out of the way whenever you're not singing. Yeah. Tell you what I have no solution for is my mic cord while trying to drum, but that's okay. We persevere. Yep. Oh, yeah. Josh That'll... goes back. Go. Oh, this changes everything. Yeah. This is a good setup. This is a great setup. What do you say, boys? One more. Encore? encore? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm down for an encore. Good. Right. Um, encore, you baby. Gotta think, you gotta select it. Well, that was a nice, groovy piece of work right there, but I kind of think that we might need a little something more hardcore to finish off the last banana ball game in Grayson Stadium. And this year, Caitlin Scott, look out. That's okay. You did your best, and she's made it through. Smells like teen spirit, folks. That you send chat, no men. Bay -tay -fay. Bring us in, Chad. Oh, yeah. What you got for us, Josh? Load up our guns, bring your friends It's fun to lose and to pretend She's overboard and selfish Oh, I know, I know A dirty word Hello, 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 hello Hello, 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 hello Hello, 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 hello Star power early on. Let's get back to Joshy, huh? I'm worse than what I do best for this gift.
three. And although we're putting on a concert here, it's Chad Prim and Asola. Chris Face Face Rocks. is how you close out the final Grayson Stadium broadcast of 2023. You guys rocked. You guys rocked. You rocked. How about that? 99% on the notes. 97 on the guitar. 147 straight notes for Chris. And I hit 12 straight. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful. OK, we have a crew to shout out here before we shut things down. Uh, we will see you next Friday in Milwaukee, uh, the second home of rock and roll, I've heard. Something like that. Yeah. So close to Cleveland, right? Um, to the incredible crew that made this happen tonight and a couple nights ago and Saturday as well when we were out in the party plaza. Our technical director down in the control room is Griffin Ellis. Our director, Chris Haynes, on the bass. Chris, yeah, 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 incredible yeah, work, yeah, my dear good man. Work. Thank you. Good on, the, plan. on the scorebook and audio, it is Kwanzi, one name, two jobs. On the graphics, it is Julia Massey. On the stats that are being updated on said graphics, it is Mikey O'Connor. They are the best in the biz. When it comes to the field, Emerson Elmgren was on the first base camera, the Iron Horse of BTV. Across the diamond from her, Dakota Burns said, one of our legends as well. On the high home just below us, it was Mr. Michael Basista. There he is. Excellent work, Michael. On the low home, it was Henry Campbell. There he is. Are you kidding me? That's why I say the best hair and beard combo this side of the Mississippi. Okay, for the center field cam, Bella Soto. She was all the way out on the scaffolding and not currently in the booth with us. On the wireless cam, it was Nick Keldy currently holding the phone. There is DJ Squints. For everybody in all his glory, our video legend Chris Sachi saucing up some highlights for the pregame. Our YouTube king Zach Bro, our Zappos and Kate Club queen Melissa Beal tossing out not one but two pairs of pokas. Yes, thank you, Melissa Bean Supreme, for that. And our chat moderators Colbite underscore and Scott Thompson. It takes an entire team, and boy oh boy, what an incredible job it is. Also, shout out Savannah Alanis, our marketing coordinator, for keeping the vibes immaculate up here in the booth. Josh Tolevsky on the military and statistical savantry, 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 you killed it. I understand why they call you bass drum Biko. You <laughs> nailed the drums and you nailed tonight's call. Good work, my friend. Thank you very much. That's what I get for hitting 12 notes in a row. Uh, Chad Reese, our coordinating producer of BTV, is the straw that stirs the drink. Yeah, break it, Chad. No, don't oh, actually. Chad. Whoa, Chad. <laughs> oh, Chad, you're a sicko. Oh, Chad. Whoa. Wow. Oh my gosh. That was awesome. Oh, wow. Now we're a rock band. Woo! 
I'm ready to play another song. Okay, but we don't have time for that. I am Biko Scala. Thank you to the executive producers of BTV, Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton. And thank you all for watching so much, as well as thank you to Sean Fluke and Kyle Lewis for joining us in the booth. Uh, it says, please reconnect the controller, Chad. So good luck with that one. We will see you on Friday night in Milwaukee as the Bananas and Party Animals do battle once again. There are five games left on the tour, and the Party Animals are only down by four and have won four straight. Boy, oh boy, it is heating up late here. We will see you on Friday night. And of course, we'll see you